Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the holiday season, and I hope you're finding some time to enjoy some of your favorite retro games. As we get ready to close the book on 2022, I think it's safe to say that this was the year for handheld gaming devices. More so than any year before this, we were truly spoiled by great choices when it comes to handhelds at almost every price point. With that said, I wanted to put together a video on my favorite handhelds of 2022. For a handheld to be considered for this video, it must have shipped as a retail device internationally during the year. That's a critical distinction to make, as that's going to disqualify some of the handhelds that I've been enjoying during the last quarter of this year. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's kick things off. The Miu Mini was one of my favorite handhelds of 2021, but this year saw the release of an improved version, the Miu Mini version 2. Despite the fact that the first version went on sale over a year ago, it remains the best mini handheld on the market. It's also one of the most difficult handhelds to get a hold of for the MSRP. Unfortunately, Miu did not produce enough units to meet the high demand for this device, which is why we're starting to see other companies offering similar products at around the same price. But if you're patient, it is still possible to purchase a Miu Mini for the intended price of $60. If you enjoy searching for deals, this could be an added bonus as you try to secure your own device. The Miu Mini is an excellent device overall, and it's one of my top recommendations for anyone that's interested in purchasing a gaming device, but they don't want to spend a large amount of money on their first one. It offers great performance for the price with the ability to play a large variety of retro games, and it has plenty of customization options available through third-party software solutions and custom mods. Additionally, the compact size of the Miu Mini makes it easy to carry with you everywhere, making it a perfect device to use all year round. I debated on whether to include this device in this video, given that it's a handheld from 2021 that did not receive any hardware updates like the Miu Mini. I ultimately decided to include it in this video because it received a significant software update in 2022 that made it a much better product than it was in 2021. This is obviously the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, and it was also one of my favorite handhelds of last year. For $40 more than the MSRP of the Miu Mini, we get the best 4x3 handheld that exists right now. There's nothing with more power than this with a 4x3 screen, and there are also not many other handhelds that beat this from a price versus performance standpoint. With the software update that dropped in March, the RP2 Plus became the first Android handheld that offered an accessible onboarding experience for people that were new to Android or were new to Android emulation. The funny thing is that even after the company showed the first version of its Android launcher last year, no other company has been able to offer a comparable solution. In many cases, the competition is laughable. With an MSRP of $99, the RP2 Plus is a fantastic handheld at an affordable price, making it a great choice for those that are new to the handheld market. It is worth noting that the company now sells a 3 Plus model, so it should be possible to find used 2 Plus models at discounted prices if you search around. The processor that is in here still does an amazing job at emulating games from all of your favorite retro systems that display in 4x3. Even after all this time, I still appreciate the charm of this guy and I like the improved buttons it features. The version that I have here is somewhat unique as it was constructed using salvaged RP2 shells that did not pass quality assurance testing, but I still find it enjoyable to use. The RP2 Plus is a handheld that you can throw in your pocket or your bag and have hours of entertainment on a single charge. It's hard to beat the total package of what the E2 Plus became this year, and that's a big reason why I decided to include it in my favorite handhelds of 2022. Editor Taki here. While I was working on this video, the company updated the RP2 Plus to Android 11. Beyond just giving us a more modern Android version to use, this comes with the benefit of having new GPU drivers that can improve gaming performance in certain scenarios, especially with Vulkan. I haven't installed it on my device, but I did do enough testing on the RP3 to know that it's a good free performance bump. Back to the video. I'm a big fan of nostalgia in my handhelds, and the next one checked a lot of boxes for me when I first got my hands on it. This is the RG353P. It's another 4x3 handheld, but it's not as powerful as the RP2+. Plus. This handheld retails for over $130, and it's equipped with an RK3566 processor. I was originally drawn to this thing because it's essentially a Super Nintendo controller at the end of the day, and that was one of my favorite consoles as a kid. As a handheld, this guy has a lot of solid aspects beyond retro styling. It has the ability to easily dual boot into either Linux or Android. On the Linux side, you'll get your standard setup with good performance in most of the systems that are supported by this processor. You can customize the look of the system by changing the theme, and there are a decent number of themes available in the stock system with more available online. 
The Android side is more bare bones, but you can customize it to your liking by installing different apps and emulators. Sometimes I get asked to talk about how I end up using handhelds after review, and from day one, this guy was always going to be a Super Nintendo handheld. And six months after my initial review, that held up. The RG353P can do a lot more than this given the fact that we have two analog sticks and dual shoulder buttons, but I have other handhelds that can do everything else better. The analog sticks aren't really that useful with this processor and the shoulder buttons aren't that great, especially R2 and L2. What I can say is you have a good set of core buttons that you need for retro systems like Super Nintendo. The D-pad is good, and so are the face buttons, even if they could have been a bit bigger than this. I ended up using this device a lot after my initial review, and I used it to play through and beat many Super Nintendo games that I either never played or never managed to complete on other devices. I had a lot of fun with this, and I think that's one of the most important things when deciding which devices make the cut for my favorite ones of the year. From the RG353P, we need to add a decent amount of money to get to our next handheld. There are three Odin models on offer with current pricing of $229 to $287. While I think the Odin Lite is the best of the bunch from a price versus performance standpoint, I decided to go with the Odin Pro for this video, and I picked the Super Nintendo Color option for obvious reasons. This video is about my favorite handhelds of last year, but I think the Odin Pro is easily in the top two or top three best handhelds of this year. It's certainly the best Android handheld that we have to date, and the Odin Pro model, in particular, is able to run Android, Linux, and Windows, making it one of the most versatile gaming handhelds for the price. Beyond the value and versatility, I like how good this device is at emulating PS2, GameCube, and Wii. I've done extensive testing on all three of those systems in other videos, and this thing holds up very well with the ability to overclock the GPU for added performance. Since its initial release, it's even gained the ability to do some Switch emulation, and the performance even at this early stage with something like Skyline Edge is much better than I ever thought it would be one or two years ago. The Odin Pro is kind of the end game for Android handhelds at this point. Nothing is better than this, and nothing on the horizon seems like it will offer a direct upgrade over what this offers, even for more money. With the Odin Pro, you get a device with a great set of controls, including analog shoulder buttons, good ergonomics with a built-in grip in the back, active and passive cooling with the ability to change fan intensity to suit your needs, and you get a 6-inch 1080p display. For those that like to do some media consumption on their Android devices, I think the Odin Pro is one of the best sounding speakers in a handheld today. They have a great low end and good overall clarity. The Odin Pro makes it in my list of my favorite handhelds of 2022 because it was a handheld that I really enjoyed this year. With the performance that this thing has under the hood and all of the systems that it can emulate, it's hard to ask for more. Having seen firsthand what a small company was able to do with Odin, I was very excited when I found out that Logitech and Tencent were throwing their hat in the ring. Both of these companies have a lot of money, and that's a good thing because it takes a lot of money to get access to processors that are better than what was used in Odin. Unfortunately for me, Logitech and Tencent decided to make a streaming handheld with a weaker processor than Odin. They also decided to slap a very high initial MSRP on the device of $350, or $300 with a pre-order. This thing now sells for $300 with occasional pricing down to $250 with coupons or sales. Even though I'm disappointed that these guys cheaped out by going with a Snapdragon 720G, the main hardware in this is good for the intended use case of cloud gaming. The fact of the matter is, this is a device that is super easy to get a hold of if you live in the States by heading over to Amazon or Best Buy, and that is not something that you can say about every handheld that I review. From an emulation standpoint, there's still enough power in here to play all of your favorite retro systems, and a decent amount of titles from GameCube, Wii, and PS2. Android gaming on this is not the best, and that's largely because Tencent or Logitech didn't implement any screen mapping technology in this device. I thought this was something that they would end up doing after the device launched since it was an obvious weak point, but they didn't. Given that there are so many Android devices on the market today that offer some form of screen mapping, it is strange that this doesn't have it. So why does the Logitech G Cloud make the list? Well, it is a great handheld if you only care about cloud gaming. It does that job very well. It has a great 7-inch 1080p display that puts a lot of other handhelds to shame, and the controls and ergonomics are good enough to feel right at home for console gamers. Now we are in the price range of PC handhelds, and I only have two that I care about from 2022. The first is the iNeo Air. 
This is a device that I think would have made a huge splash had it been released in 2021 instead of 2022. It's the cheapest product that this company has ever made, but it has to unfortunately compete in a post-Steam Deck world. That means it's not going to be for everyone, but it is a good handheld in its own right. It's also the only PC handheld that we have with an OLED screen, and that's one of the biggest marketing aspects of this thing beyond the smaller size. The company is planning to sell cheaper versions of this with an LCD screen, and a lot of what I like about this will carry over to that device. With some minor annoyances, this is a very solid mini PC handheld with good components and a ton of styles available. At the time I reviewed this guy, there were only two things that I didn't really like. The first was the fact that we did not have manual fan control, and that's important because the default fan curves on this are way too aggressive when they don't need to be. The second thing was the audio quality of the speakers was pretty lackluster. Those are both things that are now solved. On the speaker front, it turns out that I made this device with one of the speakers out of phase. That made the sound appear to be trapped inside the shell. After verifying that this was the case with some sound examples, I was able to fix this with an app called Equalizer APO and a single line of text in a config file. Without having the device, it's hard to appreciate how big of an improvement this was, but it's awesome. It brought the speakers from being a solid 1 or 2 out of 10 to an easy 7 or 8. I recorded a small selection of game audio so you can hear the difference for yourself. The first clip is how the device sounds by default. And here's how it sounds with the phase change. So yeah, big improvement. Custom fan control dropped earlier this month, and it works as you would expect. You can keep the device in auto mode, or you can come in here and change the fan speeds as a percentage. The minimum level that's supported here is 20%, and that's able to handle 8 watt TDP or lower without issue. It's also very quiet. At the end of the day, this is a super niche handheld that I wish was cheaper than it is so more people would get a chance to experience it. It has clear limitations that you need to work around to get the most out of it, but it's a good handheld, and it's also one of the best small PC handhelds that currently exists. So far we've covered six of my favorite handhelds of 2022, but if I had to pick only one, it would be the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is awesome, and it did more for handheld gamers than any other handheld in history. Back in November, I did a video summarizing the main reasons why I think the Steam Deck is the main handheld that people should buy today, and a lot of those reasons are why this is one of my favorite handhelds of this year. It just does so much more than other handhelds do for a much better price, and with a far bigger community and all of the benefits that come with one. While there are some parts of this thing that could be refined a bit further, the Steam Deck is just simply a good device. It's a safe recommendation to anyone that already enjoys other handheld gaming devices and wants to explore playing PC titles on the go. It's a great couch handheld, and it's also a good travel companion. The great thing about this being a PC handheld is you can do almost anything you could want on this. If you don't really care about PC gaming and you just want to use it for emulation, it is a very capable handheld for emulating consoles all the way up to the Switch. It's so good at emulation that I could cut down my entire collection of handhelds to only this device and I wouldn't feel like I was missing out on that much. Even after all the time I've spent gaming on my Steam Deck, I'm still blown away by how good the software experience is on this and how it continues to improve with each software update. The fact is, the Steam Deck is a much better handheld at the end of 2022 than it was at the beginning. The great thing about the success of this device is that Valve continues to state that they want to keep targeting this performance level and this platform, which means this should continue to improve in the future. It also means that game publishers have more of an incentive to target and test for the Steam Deck since it has a very large user base. I have a lot of Steam games that I've not finished, and I've played through way more of them on the Steam Deck than I ever did with any other hardware that I've owned. If a new game comes out that I want to buy and it's supported on the deck, I know that I'm going to have a good time if I decide to play it on my deck. For a base price of $399, it's hard to complain with what the Steam Deck gives you. I've really enjoyed all the time that I've spent with mine, and that's why it's one of my favorite handhelds of 2022. Well, that's going to wrap up things on this one. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. If you are a big handheld collector, what devices made your favorite handhelds of 2022? Leave your list down below and don't forget to leave a like on this one if you enjoyed it. Happy gaming everyone.